So I hope you caught my video from a few days ago on men's fragrances and how bad they smell after they've been reformulated. If you haven't caught that, please go catch that. It's a great video of fragrances that you should probably avoid. It's ranked. But today I'm doing the opposite in this video. Fragrances that smell great after the reformulations. Classic men's fragrances from the 90s and before we've got fragrances dating back to the 30s. Today, old fragrances that still smell great, but it is a ranked video and I've got 20 to number one, number one being the best smelling, number 20 to be the worst, but again, they're you know ranked, but still all these smell great to me. If you wanna find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in, this is Sebastian. Yes, today it's all about men's classic fragrances. I actually did a video on a similar theme like this just at the start of the pandemic last year. I think it was 25 or 30 men's fragrances and I ranked them from how good they smell from worst to, to best. If you haven't caught that video as well, go catch that. But today I've got fragrances here that I haven't featured in a video like this before. So none of the ones from a year and a half ago are in here. These are all newer fragrances. Uh, from the last year and a half, mostly from the last year that I really, really like. Men's classic fragrances that still smell great today and it's ranked. But before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into my channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Let's jump right into this. We're gonna do this as fast as possible. We're gonna start off with the first one and go into the house of Tommy Hilfiger. Tommy Boy. 1994 is when this was launched. Alberto Morillas and Annie Buzantian created this fragrance and it's a fragrance I wore and I loved. Now it's actually very, very watered down. Still smells great and I enjoy it because I like the kind of crisp Granny Smith apple type note in here. You know, it's a pleasant smell. It's kind of comforting, but it, man, it is gotten really, really weak, really, really weak. So it's a sad thing that these fragrances get really, really weak. Uh, I was mentioning it in the bad reformulations video from a few days ago. Is it because the brands are now, well not now, they've been doing this for a while, launching flanker after flanker after flanker. So what they do is uh, kind of weaken the original so they can do these like more intense versions, extreme versions, eau de parfum, parfum, things like that. I don't know what the deal is, but this is really, really weak. Still smells great, but you know, minty, Granny Smith apples, bergamot, grapefruit, lavender, cranberry, things like that, but sad it's a kind of a weak uh, version of the original. But not a bad week, you know? Wearable still. Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy Boy, number 20. So the next one I'm going to mention is uh, from Davidoff, Cool Water, the original what do you call it, aquatic marine fragrance. Although to me, not necessarily marine, it's more aquatic, lightly kind of uh, marine touches in there. Uh, this is created uh, by Pierre Bourdon from 1988. And I think it used to smell a little better before, not a little, probably a lot better. It is a weaker version of it, but still I think it's pretty solid for what it is. It wasn't my all time favorite fragrance. In fact, I wore so much of Aspen, which smelled like this from Coty, uh, that I got really burnt out on anything like this. But, you know, it's a pleasant smell. Uh, I think it's a groundbreaking fragrance, the launch of the aquatics and things like that. And created by Pierre Bourdon, who actually created a similar fragrance. Well, the rumor is he created a similar fragrance for Creed called Green Irish Tweed. But this has seawater, lavender, mint, green notes, rosemary, calone, coriander, sandalwood, neroli, musk, tobacco, geranium. A lot of stuff but it's an aquatic aromatic to me, a more aquatic, less marine kind of a thing. So Davidoff Cool Water from 1988 is at number 19. All right, this next one is from 1934. Go into the house of Alfred Dunhill. This is Dunhill for men, this one right here. You know, when you smell this one, you can smell the age, but in a good way, not in a bad way. You can tell it's classic, it has classic smell, and it actually really, really smells great. But to me, I think this might come off 
really, really old to a lot of folks, really old. But I still like the way it smells. Really do, uh, the carnation in here uh, just has a very classic smell and I like that car carnation note. But this one uh, was from 1934. Uh, this is the current version. I, sh I should mention none of these are vintage. All of them are current version and I'm ranking the current versions. That's why I'm doing this video. Uh, no perfumer is mentioned for this one. I couldn't figure it out. But it's leather, carnation, lemon, lavender, nutmeg, geranium oak moss vetiver sandalwood and woodsy notes it's a great great fragrance you know it smells really really great but it does smell mature it's very, very mature classic a little aged but um, you know I like aged wine so why not aged perfume right uh, a classy uh, gentlemanly very very you know uh, what do you call it? Like, vin doesn't smell vintage. I'm not saying that. It just smells like it's age, you know? You can smell that it's a historic kind of a smell kind of a thing. Maybe that's the carnation that's doing it in here. Either way, Alfred Dunhill, Dunhill for men at number 18. So this next one is from the house of Jacques Bogart. This is Bogart EDT from 1975, created by Lucien Ferrero and Morris or Maurice Morin. So it's interesting, Lucien Ferrero I met a couple years ago and he uh, now has his own perfume line which is kind of cool that I didn't realize he created this fragrance which is kind of an awesome thing. This is kind of a groundbreaking fragrance from a brand that has so many amazing old school style fragrances for men. If you don't know this house and you like old school fragrances, you gotta dig into Jacques Bogart. 1975, as I said, this is oak moss, birchwood, leather, nutmeg, rosemary, lemon blossom, geranium, cloves, juniper, cedar, lavender. A Lot of stuff going on in here, but for me, it's mostly a spicy, aromatic leather fragrance with light smoky touches and woodsy and uh, touches and things like that. Very, very classic. Again, all these fragrances are are probably going to smell a little tired for someone that does not know fragrances like this new generation who is only into you know what's out there now these are very very masculine fragrances and what's being released in designers for men are very unisex to me currently so these if you like these you know what fragrances were like before you know the 2000s and 2010s and things like that Bogart EDT from Jacques Bogart at number 17. This next one's from the house of Versace. This is Lom, the first fragrance uh, from this house launched in 1986. It's a Chypre and it's created by Roger Pellegrino, who I don't know, and actually he's on this list twice. Uh, this is, uh, as I said, Chypre. It's a, it's a lemony, a citrusy, leathery Chypre fragrance. Really, really smelling great again, but compared to the rest of them, I put it here because it you know, it's up there, but uh, at this time, this is how I feel about this. And when I was smelling all these fragrances, number 16 is where this one ended up. But still, really, really great smelling Sheeper style fragrance from the 80s for men, featuring leather, lemons, oak moss, carnation, cinnamon, patchouli, basil, musk, vanilla, sandalwood, rose, bergamot, and pettigrain. There's bitter citrusy touches. This also kind of hints at something like YSL Pour Homme, Chanel's Pour Homme, I think the, the classic cheaper fragrance that comes in two different bottles drawing a blank so it's kind of in that ballpark of lemony leathery aromatic cheaper style fragrance but really really great smell anyway Versace Loam at number 16 I was gonna say at number 1986 which is the year it came out all right next fragrance is going to the house of Jacques Bogart this is one man show and speaking of Roger Pellegrino who created uh, the uh, Versace Loam this is also created by Roger Pellegrino, a name I did not know until these two fragrances. And I like what he's done with these fragrances. I'm curious to learn more about what he's done. And once again, this is from 1980 and it's kind of a similar style. I think this is more, well, you know, it's kind of similar. It's oak moss, pine tree, basil, leather, cedar, carnation, nutmeg, bergamot, caraway, sandalwood, styrax, patchouli, galbanum. It's more of an intense woody ambery experience but lots of aromatics and leather and uh, of course oak moss and things like that. Very, very, um, you know, 
just a, like it smells like green uh, forest with lots of leathery touches. So I believe this is once again a cheaper style fragrance that uh, smells really really great but you know obviously it didn't end up at the top of the list. So One Man Show, the original from 1980 by Jacques Bogart at number 15. All right next up going to the House of Florist number 89. Do you guys know this one? This is from 1951. These are the this is this one and um, Dunhill for Men are the two oldest fragrances and uh, both British houses. But Floris is not clothes, uh, more just about fragrance. And this smells really, really great to me. Really, really wonderful. And the formulation that Floris has done for this, the current formulation, smells really, really classy. Very, very elegant, dressy man. Kind of an aromatic, spicy fragrance. Woods as well. But oak moss, lavender, rose, musk, bergamot, orange, neroli, pentagram, geranium, sandalwood, vetiver, cedar. Really, really class all the way with this one. It does smell age. You know, you can tell that it's a classic fragrance. This is the kind of stuff I, you know, was hanging around the t type of people that when I was young and smelling, you know, when uh, family members, you know, men and things like that would smell fragrances like this. this these, like, are the kind of fragrances that have left an impression on me. And not only the men's fragrances, but I also, from the women, when, when I was hanging around with my mom and her friends. So all these classic fragrances are really the stuff that we uh, kind of got used to smelling when we were young. And that's why kind of they, they mean a lot to me. But either way, Floris's number 89 is a great, great class act fragrance that uh, definitely deserves to be uh, checked into. So Floris number 89, uh, definitely a great one from 19... Uh, 51 and that's at 14. And next up going to the house of Alfred Dunhill once again. This is the second of two fragrances from Alfred Dunhill. This is Dunhill edition. I recently spoke about this in another video for inexpensive fragrances and this is really really great. It's an aromatic style fragrance once again uh, from 1984 created by Alan Astori. I don't know this person or this perfumer, but this is a great fragrance and the current version is really, really smelling great. Got a lot of greens in here. It's very, very green and aromatic, spicy and a little bitter as well. Fir, nutmeg, vetiver, oak moss, clary sage, cedar, carnation, amber, geranium, and jasmine. Carnation is not really used much in fragrances in current days, but it was used a lot. Maybe carnation has an old association, an old smell, but I really love the, the way carnation smells and carnation and cloves remind me of one another although cloves get really more concentrated in the spice but when you smell carnations they have a cloviness but this really is a great great fragrance both of these are really really great classic uh, Dunhill fragrances that deserve to be checked into so Alfred Dunhill Dunhill edition from 1984 is a number 13. All right, this next one is so good, guys. Really, really great, uh, and it's a really uh, great reformulation as well. It's from the house of Estee Lauder. This is Lauder for men. Anybody know this one? So this, to me, man, it's a Chypre, and also it reminds me a little bit of Aramis. I spoke about Aramis in other videos, so I haven't featured it in this video but if you like the idea of Aramis by Aramis this is something that you might like and it's a given that they would have a similar fragrance because Estee Lauder and Aramis were doing similar fragrances because it's all under the same company so Estee Lauder launches a men's fragrance called Lauder for Men in 1985, created by Nicolas Calderon, which actually smells like Aramis by Aramis. Anyway, both fragrances remind me of one another, but this is really, really great. It's a very, very familiar smell. It's a Chypre, once again. Chypres were really popular for men. Fougeres and Chypres were really, really popular. And when you smell this, you can totally smell the Chypre stylings of it. So did I say who created this? Nicolas Calderon features notes of juniper berries, galbanum, oak, Oak moss, sandalwood, vetiver, patchouli, green notes, clary sage, anise, lily of the valley. Great, great classic men's fragrance from 1985. Uh, and I love this bottle. Really, really classy, elegant bottle. Anyway, Estee Lauder, Lauder for Men, number 12 from 1985. This next fragrance is going to the house of Houbegant. This is Duc de Vervins from 1985. I can't find a perfumer for this one, but once again, we've got something that smells kind of in that same ballpark as uh, um, Dracar Noir. I forgot what I was going to say. And this is a fragrance I wore so much of. I love Dracar Noir. Really, really love that kind of old school barbershop smell. And here, it's definitely prominent in here. I couldn't find a perfumer for this one, but notes are oak moss, lavender, bergamot, rosemary, sage, patchouli, musk, geranium, lemons, nutmeg. So it's basically woods 
aromatics and citruses and of course uh, oak moss is in here as well it's a really really great fragrance uh, I love the bottle as well very kind of like 80s looking art deco-ish kind of a bottle but really wonderful wonderful smelling classic kind of fragrance if you like Dracar Noir if you like the new um, Eau de Mente from Diptyque and you want some similar style fragrances definitely check out Duck de Vervans from Hubegond, and that's at number 11, and a fragrance launched in 1985. This next fragrance is going to the house of Keton. This is Keton Men. Great scent, very, very office safe, classy, elegant, violet forward, powdery, lightly fruity, definitely musky kind of a fragrance. No perfumer is mentioned for this one, but uh, came out in 1996. As I said, notes are violets, pineapple, musk, lily of the valley, bergamot, sage, lemon, cedar, oak moss. Again, it's violet tea and powdery, lightly vegetal, a little sweet, but the combination of the notes really, really works well. I think this is a signature type fragrance. If you're only into one fragrance, you like the idea of violets, definitely a fragrance you need to check out with uh, uh, violets. And it's Kitan Men, wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Both of the fragrances from Kitan for Men are still around, really inexpensive, a larger size bottle with more juice in it, definitely worth owning. Oh boy, memories galore with this one. This next one's from the house of Hugo Boss. This is number one. Anybody know this one? Boy, I, like I said, I've got major memories for this one. Like the latter part of my teens, I, when I was going to high school, I got a job working at a dry cleaner. This came out in 1985. This was for me working in a dry cleaner. I worked for like a year. Uh, it was around 1987, 88. All the guys, the business guys that used to come in and drop off their, you know, shirts would smell like this. I would, every time I would ask, what is that fragrance or cologne, I would say, they would say Hugo Boss number one. So this has a lot of memories for me because I love the smell. And to me, it still smells fantastic. Really, really great smelling fragrance and really, really takes me back to those days when this was a very, very popular fragrance. In fact, it was so popular and so much used, I actually wore it myself towards the uh, late 80s. So this is created by Pierre Wergnay, who I'm familiar with the name, not familiar with a lot of his creations. Launched in 1985 and features notes of tobacco, honey, artemisia, lavender, oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood, rose, bergamot, jasmine, musk. Great smelling fragrance. It's that kind of aromatic, spicy, woody tobacco fragrance. Very, very classy, total 80s fragrance. Uh, you know, wonderful, wonderful smell. I love this one. Anyway, Hugo Boss number one uh, from 1985 is at number nine and it still smells fantastic. The next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Loewe, launched in 1988. It's Loewe Essenzia EDT. No longer comes in this bottle. They've done a uniform bottles now. But this, to me, if you like Polo Green, the original Polo from 1978, Loewe launched this 10 years after that and it still smells great. The reformulation is amazing. Now, this bottle, I know, the new bottle and the new, you know, thin bottle, uniform bottle, has it changed in smell? I don't know, but this particular version is fantastic. Lots of fir, pine tree, lavender, juniper berries, green notes, tarragon, oak moss, leather, vetiver, patchouli, basil, clary sage. Lots of aromatics, lots of, lots of woods, lots of spices, oak moss and things like that. It's a great fougere barber style fragrance. No perfumer mentioned for this one, I can find it, but a great smelling fragrance still. Anyway, Loewe Incensia EDT from 1988 is a great alternative for polo green. If you're if you like that fragrance, men, you should definitely check this one up because I recently featured Polo Green in the worst reformulation video, but this is a great, great alternative. It's also not as leathery, which in Polo, the leather kind of gets in the way because it does not smell very good anymore, uh, the leather part in that fragrance. Anyway, Loewe Essenzia EDT, a great scent at number eight. This next one is from the house of Jeffrey Bean. Bowling Green. Again, we're going to that kind of Drakkar Noirish kind of smell. This to me still smells freaking fantastic. Really takes me back to the 80s when I was going to high school and wearing fragrances like this. Such a great scent. Um, this, I didn't really dig into this one. I knew gray flannel a lot, but for some reason I had skipped this one. I don't know why. 
I don't really know why, but this to me today still smells great. It is thinner, but still as a smell, it's fantastic. Launched in 1986, uh, but no perfumer, I can't find a perfumer for this one, but it features notes of lemons, oak moss, lemon verbena, lavender, bergamot, fir, pine, nutmeg, cloves, sage, patchouli, rosemary. Really, really great aromatic green, uh, fresh, spicy kind of a uh, fragrance that is to die for. Very classic, very 80s smelling that I really, really love. The 80s is my decade. I kind of, you know, came into myself in the 80s and uh, I was wearing a lot of fragrances like this. So Jeff Jeffrey Bean Bowling Green from 1988 is at number seven. All right, going to the house of Cartier. This is Santos de Cartier. Do you guys know this one? Really a great smelling fragrance once again. This is from 1981, created by Daniel Moliere, who I don't know much about. Uh, I got this as a tester off of some uh, discounter, and I really love the way it smells, and I love this bottle. Very, very classy bottle. Smells really great. A little tired, but not too much. Features notes of lavender, black pepper, juniper, basil, nutmeg, vetiver, geranium, rosemary, sandalwood. You know, it has great notes. It still smells smells great. Sadly, it's not sold here in the States, but it is at the discounters. It's not discontinued in Europe and other markets. Here, it's not at the stores, but it's still really, really a great smelling, aromatic, woody, spicy fragrance that's very, very classy to wear. And Cartier is a great house for fragrances. Anyway, Santos de Cartier, this is the EDT version or the original version. There are a couple of other versions of, of this one. Cartier, Santos de Cartier from 1981. A great smell. This next fragrance, this is from the house of uh, Ted Lapidus. This is Lapidus Pour Homme. For a really, really inexpensive fragrance, this stuff is magic in a bottle. Takes me back to 1986. Really, really familiar smell. It's tobacco honey kind of combo. This is created by Martin Gras unfamiliar with this perfumer, but notes are tobacco, honey, pineapple, lavender, incense, artemisia, pine, amber, musk, sandalwood, rose, juniper, lemons, and basil. You know, a lot of Fougere's aromatic fragrances and uh, Chypres were really popular from the 60s, maybe in the 50s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, on to the, you know, the beginning of the 90s, and they came up with so many different variations of those fragrances, and this definitely smells Really, really great today. Wonderful smell. Anyway, Ted Lapidus, Lapidus Pour Homme at number five. Wonderful, wonderful smell. I can't get enough of it. This next fragrance, going to the house of Oscar de la Renta, Pour Louis. No perfumer, I couldn't find a perfumer. This is from 1980. This stuff is fantastic. Now, somebody sent me an email asking me if, uh, if this stuff smells great. Is it uh, the version that was um, created in France or USA? I, I wasn't aware that they were making two different versions of this. When I looked at my bottle, it says France and USA the, on the bottom. And uh, so I can't really tell, but to me it smells great. You know, it does have that kind of a Kuros-like smell, but in a different direction, you know. There is that kind of Kuros reminder. Both of the fragrances came out in the early 80s. This is 80, and I think Kuros came out in 80 as well. But so they do have similarities. So if you can get past that, this smells fantastic. Really, really amazing smell. I'm shocked at how great it is, and I love the bottle, and that's why it's featured here at number four. Uh, so I couldn't find a perfumer, as I said, but oak moss, aldehydes, lavender, carnation, leather, juniper berries, patchouli, labdanum, sandalwood, cinnamon, galbanum. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance. So good. So good. I'm so glad I found this at a discounter for about $35. It smells fantastic to me. Takes me back to the 80s once again. Oscar de la Renta, Pour Louis from 1980. So this next fragrance is even more interesting because the price is amazing, amazing. Really, really inexpensive fragrance. Daniel Hector Character. I, I never smelled this fragrance. This is not a vintage fragrance. I bought it from FragranceNet, current formulation. It was about $15, I think $12 to $15. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with the way it smells. It really smells great. 
Yeah, probably it's been reformulated, but damn, it's really, really good. So this is from 1989. Maybe that's why, because it's an older, fra not a, more a younger fragrance, perhaps. But I've, I've smelled things from the 90s that don't smell as good as they used to. But maybe because I wasn't familiar with the original smell. I took a chance because I saw it for so inexpensive. And I bought it, and I love the way it smells. It takes me back to the 80s once again. Definitely does. It's that aromatic, spicy, leathery kind of fragrance with the cheaper stylings. It created by Alain Serju, I don't know who this is, 1989, features notes of leather, oak moss, fur, lavender, aldehydes, carnation, incense, patchouli, amber, musk, cedar, sage, geranium, caraway. A lot of stuff happening with this one. Very, very complex, really, really great smelling, very, very spicy, very aromatic, very leathery, and it smells damn good on me. I'm shocked at how good it is for the price. Anyway. If you guys are going to take a chance and take a crack at it, uh, just be advised. I'm into old school fragrances. If you're into only modern stuff, this is not going to work for you. But it is only around $15, so then you might, you know, dig it. But just be warned, this is the kind of fragrance that people wore in the 80s. That's the kind of smell it is. Anyway, Daniel Hector character from 1989. Fantastic smell. I'm shocked at how great it is. Anyway, the next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Cartier once again. This is Pasha de Cartier EDT from 1992 and it's created by Jacques Cavalier. This is a very aromatic spicy fragrance and also amped up with the patchouli. So it's very, very sexy and it's kind of like reminds me of clubs in the late 80s, early 90s when people used to go dancing and sweat and you know, you can smell their cologne like pumping off of them projecting off of them that's the kind of fragrance this is um it's so good uh the it does remind me of the new version the pasha de cartier uh, parfum but this is a little more old, old school and not necessarily as hip and modern i mean the, the new one does have the classic stylings but it's definitely a lot more modern than this particular one but this features lavender mint oak moss coriander caraway anise sandalwood patchouli labdanum rosewood and mandarin orange wonderful wonderful fragrance if you like the the new version and you want to kind of go back in time and smell what it used to be definitely worth uh, doing that so cartier pasha de cartier EDT from 1992, created by Jacques Cavalier, very, very well-known perfumer, who's the in-house perfumer now for Louis Vuitton. And can you guess my number one? And can you guess my number one? My number one fragrance is Kenzo Jungle Ohm from 1998. Yes, this is a, making sense that this would be number one because this smells amazing now. And it's so freaking inexpensive. You can get this for about $35, $40, which is what I bought it for several months ago. Created by Olivier Cresp in 1998. It does hint at something like Declaration from Cartier. It's a little different, but man, it smells really, really good. It is a really great fragrance, even with the current reform or current formulation, not reformulation. I'm sure it's been reformulated, but whatever formulation this is released under now. Kenzo is under LVMH, like Dior, Guerlain, Maison Francis Kirkchen. So they, they, they've done a great job with it, whatever formulation they've given us here. But it is from 1998, so it's almost to the 2000s when this came out. But still, really, really great smelling fragrance. If you like it, spicy, woody, uh, musky, and classy, definitely check this one out. This uh, features cinnamon, guyac wood, nutmeg, cardamom, sandalwood, lime, and bergamot. Amazing fragrance. To this day, this still smells great. Uh, and I love, love wearing it. Wonderful spicy fragrance and very, very classic and masculine with uh, the woodsy touches. Anyway, Kenzo Jungle Ohm, number one. What is your number one favorite classic fragrance, 1990s to older days? Let me know what they are. Uh, also, let me know if you know these fragrances. What do you think about the way these fragrances smell? I love old school fragrances, not only men's fragrances, but I also enjoy the women's. As I said, I used to hang out with moms and dads. All of them wear fragrances and colognes, and those scents have left a major impression on me. And these ones are amazing. They're proven, like they're, they're approved by me. And if you like old school fragrances, definitely definitely please check these ones out. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.